and welcome back! In today's tutorial, we'll unravel the mysteries of two approaches for running Prometheus on Google Cloud. We're going to sketch out these two options, then walk through each one in depth using the Google Cloud Console. The open source Prometheus metrics monitoring system can be set up in a multitude of ways. The first path requires a hands-on approach and installing the service on something like Google Kubernetes Engine. For example, you could use Helm for that installation. In this configuration, you're not just collecting logs from Kubernetes itself, but also from applications that you choose. Picture an Nginx server installation. You'll have the power to gather its logs too. The second approach, however, is like trusting a seasoned guide. Using the Google Managed Kubernetes Service hands us a fully fledged cloud operations based toolkit. Can you guess the advantage? Google sets up Prometheus for us on the Kubernetes Engine cluster via the cloud operations system. So let's embark on this deep dive and record our discoveries about each approach. We'll start in the Google Cloud Console with a new Kubernetes Engine cluster. We will illustrate these concepts using an autopilot cluster. Why, you ask? Because Google is like the autopilot on a plane, handling a significant portion of the workload for us, like node pool design. And yet these concepts are also applicable to the standard cluster setup approach. We can follow the defaults with just a name swap for the cluster before its creation. Upon creating the cluster, a fascinating observation arises. The managed Prometheus service shows up as enabled. This component, which is optional in standard Kubernetes clusters, is turned on by default in autopilot. This small yet crucial insight can sometimes dictate a specific path for people. Now it's time for action. We're installing our self-hosted Prometheus on this cluster, deploying the Prometheus Community Helm chart. During installation, you've got to pay attention to one setting, the Prometheus node exporter. Make sure it's disabled so that we're in alignment with Autopilot's security controls. Once the installation is complete, the flourishing containers on our Kubernetes cluster signify victory. Courtesy of the Autopilot feature, Kubernetes handles the instantaneous provisioning of nodes for these pods. So you just sit back, relax, and in a few minutes, all workloads will be humming along smoothly. After completion, you'll see an orchestra of pods playing harmoniously together. Moreover, you should see Kubernetes metrics pods, the sleek Prometheus server, and an alert manager. This alert manager is your conduit to integration with email, pager duty, and ops genie. Shifting gears, let's cast our attention onto another interesting artifact, the Google Managed Prometheus system. Imagine a system that doesn't demand installation. Simply create and manage Prometheus shows up as an option.
This feature is pre-enabled on our standard cluster. You can easily toggle this off, giving you the power to switch on and off the Google Managed Prometheus like a flashlight. Let's move on now to examine the setup experience for monitoring pods using an example resource provided in Google's documentation. This prime example deployment will allow us to scrape metrics from port 1234. We'll download this example to our cloud shell and run it. Furthermore, we'll be using the accompanying example of a pod monitoring resource, which is part of Google's APIs for monitoring and is slightly different from the similar custom resource definitions, CRDs, that we have in the standard open source Prometheus system. This example is instructing the Prom Example app to scrape the metrics port, which is 1234, at 30 second intervals. We'll download and apply this resource as well. First, let's verify that our workload is functioning, which isn't quite the case just yet, as only one of the three replicas is up and running. To view the metrics, we can direct a port forward to the metrics port and access it via our cloud shell using the web preview feature. We'll need to hit the metrics endpoint to see the normally distributed random numbers from this example application, which we'll be scraping using the Google CRD. It may take a few moments for the metrics to populate, so we'll wait before validating these metrics in Google's Managed Prometheus Metrics Exploration System. After waiting a minute or so, we can navigate to Google Cloud's monitoring system, and specifically the Metrics Management section, to see the metrics we're gathering. Here, we have an automatic sort function based on the number of samples, and unsurprisingly, we're accumulating a lot of our example random number metrics. An exploration console is also available in the Google Cloud Operation Suite's Metrics Explorer. Note that there's no setup needed for this function, it comes right out of the box. A point to note is you can seamlessly switch between visual and PromQL code perspectives. We see here the 50th percentile of our example random numbers visualized for each of our three pods. In summary, Google Managed Prometheus provides a seamless experience with strong exploration and customization potential and without any setup. Next, let's focus on system metrics, which allow us to use PromQL for non-application metrics data. For instance, we might track the Kubernetes log volume. With Google Cloud Monitoring, these metrics can be accessed seamlessly. Everything's pre-built for us. Note that in the Kubernetes engine cluster, the system's cloud monitoring setting is exposed, which allows us to propagate cloud monitoring to other components. This gives us access to a wider array of metrics and provides additional insights for the Google Cloud Operations Suite. When it comes to metrics exploration and system metrics for self-hosted Prometheus, there are two main installation cases, a standard instance-based approach and an operator-based approach. With the operator-based approach, you would typically use CRDs, while the instance approach is usually more aligned with scrape configs. These aren't hard and fast rules, but in general, the more cloud-native the Prometheus, the more cloud-native the metrics collection approach. In all cases, we can either push or pull metrics. 
On the visualization side, we utilize the Prometheus Graph Browser for metrics exploration, while self-managed exporters typically handle system metrics. These exporters present us with a variety of options for how systems can reach out to Prometheus, as opposed to vice versa. Helm charts for exporters, for instance, provide great options for different infrastructure, databases, and services. While there are numerous choices, they are typically self-managed. In today's demonstration, we'll show how to use scrape configs and add those configs to our Helm-based installation approach. Just remember to check out the CRDs if you use the Prometheus operator-based installation approach. Let's update our installation. Some scrape configs should already be set up as they come with the Prometheus Helm chart. These preset configurations allow us to add scraping with pod annotations rather than tediously updating the scrape configs themselves. However, bear in mind that not all Prometheus installation approaches include these preset scrape configs. You might be required to set up something like this yourself. Anyway, let's alter our example app to be scraped by our Prometheus instance. The Google Cloud Shell Editor provides a user-friendly interface for this task. After updating the app, we port forward to our Prometheus instance to check our work. Already, we can see many system metrics, and we're already gathering excellent data into our self-managed Prometheus instance. Picking up the new example metrics might need some waiting time. Indeed, we need to wait for the pods to fully roll out. After a few minutes of running the new pods, we should start seeing metrics. This is due to the default setting of the Helm chart, which has a one minute scrape interval. So we only need to wait a minute or two before our metrics start appearing. Let's use our web preview and check out the latest metrics. Indeed, we can see that we're starting to get data from our example random numbers. We can look at counts, values, values over time, and use PromQL queries to delve deeper into our data inside the Prometheus graph interface. Now, it's worth reminding you that we've opted for the scrape config approach using the Helm installation, but there's also the operator-based approach available to us. This approach uses CRDs that closely resemble the Google-managed Prometheus pod monitoring that we set up earlier. Let's consider a few last important dimensions to our analysis. First, it makes sense to discuss the scalability of these configurations. With Google Managed Prometheus, it's effortless since there's no need to run Prometheus instances, Google handles all the backend systems required to gather and collect metrics. However, scalability can be more challenging with self-hosted Prometheus because you'll often need more Prometheus instances as you add new clusters. We also often see the need for projects like Thanos, which sits on top of Prometheus, allowing long-term storage and federation across multiple Prometheus instances.
If you're using Grafana in your observability stack, you'll be pleased to know that Google Managed Prometheus integrates quite nicely with endpoints and authentication for connecting to the metrics backend. Although there can be complexities similar to the scaling and multi-instance concerns, self-managed Prometheus is usually easy to connect up with Grafana as well. In terms of setup, Google Managed Prometheus definitely takes the win for simplicity. However, with regards to scraping, self-hosted Prometheus has the upper hand with its additional flexibility and control. When it comes to exploring metrics, experiencing them in the Google Cloud Console is more enriching than merely using the Prometheus Graph Browser. System metrics-wise, we get more turnkey capabilities with Google Managed Prometheus and with an uncomplicated setup. As for scalability, using Google Managed Prometheus is essentially effortless, provided you enable it on your clusters. In terms of Grafana capability, the options are pretty similar. However, Google Managed Prometheus has a slight advantage thanks to the system's full aggregation, meaning you won't have to worry about multiple data sources or complex aggregation and federation systems. In case you're using the popular OpenTelemetry project for observability data collection, note that both Prometheus backend options offer good compatibility. Lastly, if alerting is a deciding factor, Note that self-hosted Prometheus uses standard alert manager capabilities, while Google Managed Prometheus uses the cloud monitoring suite. There's no clear winner here, so it's worth checking out both options. We hope this video has been insightful and we've included the diagram file and YAML configurations in a GitHub repository. The link can be found in the video description. We welcome your questions in the comments section, and as always, please enjoy responsibly.